As we continue with our teaching series of Upgrade this morning, we'll be talking on Upgrade Your Mind. Help me tell your neighbor, Upgrade Your Mind. Tell them, neighbor, I don't want to deal with old mindsets. Upgrade your mind. Upgrade yourself. Upgrade your spirit. Say, neighbor, if you want to continue sitting next to me, you must upgrade your mind. Or else you must go. Somewhere else. Not near me. What did your neighbor say? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We taught the other day on upgrading our spirits. Praise the Lord. That it is important for us to upgrade ourselves spiritually so that we can operate with the anointing that is uh, relevant for the season or we can even, you know, live up to the demands of the season. A, a spirit that is not upgraded, updated, will always live in the past. Will always remember the past as a good season than where they are. And I've said it that, uh, quoting a scientist who said, you cannot solve the problems of a particular level with the mindset or the resources you had when you entered into that particular problem. For if what you had was good enough, the problems wouldn't have come in the first place. We have entered a new season, and there is a demand on us to upgrade ourselves. There are challenges you are going to meet this year that the strength of last year will not be enough for you. Remember when Jesus was teaching them how to pray, he said, in this manner pray, give us this day, our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. For the things, the resources of yesterday may not be sufficient for today. You get into the computer world, they will be having uh, antiviruses. So, uh, what are the names of the antiviruses? Casper Sky. Casper Sky. Wow. That is a China way of naming it. Casper Sky. Why can't the Casper your vest there? On the Casper Sky. Casper Sky, according to our pastor, because the viruses will get used to, or rather, they will find a way to bypass what this virus could do, and so you need an updated one that should be able to handle whatever challenges or viruses may come into your computer. In your phones as well, upgrade or update. Why, why do I keep on using this word? Is it update or upgrade? Update. Thank you. Update your, your, your software. iOS 15. Um, is there I, Android 15? How does it work? Four point, you are on what now? You are on Angelic. Pardon? So, you are on iOS 15. The late, there are some applications of this season that will tell you we don't operate on iOS 12 or iOS 10. We are not compatible with that. And then there are devices of probably back in the days, uh, five, six years ago, they cannot handle the operating system of this season. So you just, you just hit a, a, a wall, like you, you are forever operating on iOS 11. You can't go to 12. It, it is not built for that. As believers, we must understand how to upgrade in the spirit. As a child of God, upgrade yourself from time to time. You cannot be crying about the same situations always. You cannot be crying about the same challenges always. A child who is 10 years old, that is still on pampers, a parent will be concerned. The parent will be concerned. Even in your spiritual walk, it is a concern to God that after 10 years of salvation, 
you still find it difficult to pray for five minutes. It's a concern to God that after five years of salvation, you are still scared of the devil, especially if you come to Royal Assembly. With all the teachings we get here. After 10 years of being in a church, you are not in a service unit. It's a concern to God. Just as you can think of a 15-year-old who is still on nepis. After 10 years and you are still not serving in, God, in the house of God, you are on spiritual nepis. You are still on Nen, Nen, a 35-year-old on Nen. You have the experience of being in God, but you are still on Nen, Nen. It's called Nen. Is that the one? Purity. P purity. Spiritual purity. As much as in the physical. You know in the physical, it's a, it's a concern. This child can't talk. Then the child is 11 years old. You are a concern also. You, you can't make declarations. You are a concern to God. You are a concern. It's raining. You are just, oh God, you know, I don't have a car. I don't have an umbrella. Why is it raining? You can't command the rain to stop. You are a concern to God. Listen to this. Your upgrade in life determines your confidence. An upgraded spirit is your confidence in life. There is no challenge that has come to destroy you. Every challenge is a platform of testimonies. Simple. But you may not turn challenges into testimonies provided your spirit is not able to handle them. If I bring a three-year-old here or a two-year-old and I tell them to push me down, they may not be able to do that. With all their strength, uh, uh, they won't be able to push me down. Why? I'm stronger than that child. But if I'm told, think like a wicked man right now. Push this little baby as hard as you can. If I push that child, they will go. Is somebody hearing? Because I'm stronger than that child. Is your spirit stronger than challenges? And how do you grade yourself? The things that used to bother you, do they still bother you anymore? The things that you used to have difficulty understanding, do you still have difficulty understanding from the word of God? If it is still so, no matter the years you have been changing as a Christian, you are still the person of that season. If 2011 you were struggling with understanding John 3.16, 2022 you still struggle understanding the same verse, you are still a 2011 Christian, no matter the number of years that has passed. Upgrade your spirit. You upgrade your spirit not to withstand the devil, but to allow God to work in you, to allow God to manifest himself in you. Beloved, there is so much you can achieve in this life. There is so much you can achieve in this life. Your spirit man is the control center of everything you could ever achieve in this life. Salvation is not everything in the kingdom of God. Salvation is the access into everything. Is somebody hearing Salvation is the access into everything. Salvation is not everything, but the access into everything. Salvation is like, let's say the gate at your house, at your yard. That gate is salvation. But gaining access through the gate does not mean you are in the bedroom. It doesn't mean you are in the kitchen. With all the foods in the kitchen and in the fridge, it doesn't mean you are in the living room with that big television screen, smart TV, all kinds of stuff in it that you could watch. It doesn't mean you are in the garage, no matter the cars that are parked in there. Salvation is the gateway. Many have entered by the gate and they are celebrating. <laughs> That's all they are thanking God for. That's all they are.
thanking God for? The next song, Kaseba Kanya. Murana Jes. Baba, at your age, you are still doing this. At your age. Baba, I'm about to repeat an entire you. You even get under the, 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 the chair. Baba, I'm about to see you. And you run from your seat to the other side. And then I'm about to repeat that. You do like an entire you. <laughs> an entire you. Yeah, the songs they celebrate, the hearts they are celebrating. Renale gae kolo godimu, and then stupid men. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me not even say that. Because to them, as long as I'm saved, that's it. Salvation is not the end of everything. Salvation is access into everything. I was preaching in Palap, and I, I, I quoted Colossians chapter number one, verse twenty-six. 27, and the Bible comes and says, Paul says, there is a mystery that was hidden in time past. This mystery is not known by anyone, but I am the messenger of that mystery. The word mystery in the Greek is mysterion, which means something that has not yet been uh, uh, understood, something that has not yet been unveiled. It's a mystery. He said that mystery has existed for years past. But I am the messenger of God to unravel that mystery and to present it to this generation. He said, what is that mystery? He said, that mystery so that you, the, you can know the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. He says, I want this mystery to be known by the Gentiles. The glory of this mystery. What is that mystery? He says, that mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ is not glory. He is the hope of it. He is the hope of it. Many believers are born again. They are in God. But they are failing to maximize the vast resources at their disposal. So when I was preaching there, I said, if he says Christ in you is the hope of glory, then let us understand who is this Christ? What does Christ have? And we went to Colossians chapter number 2. Look at Colossians 2 from verse 8 to verse 10. What does Christ have? That is the hope of glory. He said, beware. Lest any man, any man, any man spoil you through vain uh, deceit and philosophy. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. What is he saying? There are people who have their own traditions as you come to this world. We have always done things this way. Others, they come, please don't, don't double up on the scriptures, just leave me on, yeah. Others come with what the world has accepted as truth. What the world has accepted as truth, all men are dogs. He says, don't let anybody saturate your mind with anything that is not after Christ. Beloveds, we are born again. We operate by a different set of rules. You can't be in Christ and live as you used to live. You double up on life. One of the reasons why people don't enjoy the blessings of God, it is not because of God. It is because of their misunderstanding. We are living in the eras where the end time is drawing nearer by the day. The nearer we get, the more serious we must be. The more serious we must be. Just as serious we should be, Satan is greatly serious. For in the last day, men shall be lovers of, the, of themselves. They will want teachings that are just making them happy. The, this generation, when you teach things that they, no, 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 we don't want that. Somebody came, I think some, some few years ago, we were still in block three industrial, and, 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 Please don't leave the scripture. And this gentleman is a pastor. So he said to me, oh man, you preach like this. I said, well, what do you mean I preach like this? That's the Bible. After that, someone, he came to my office and he said, if you get invited in South Africa, they have different grades of sermons. And the level of grades of sermons determines your honoraria. I said, really? He said, yeah. If you preach this kind that you are telling people, live purity, 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 you are going to get less honoraria. But if you preach the one that you tell them, 
you will succeed this year. You will hit it big this year. Your husband is behind you. Don't look behind, please. I, I beg you. I beg you. He said, you preach that one. Ah, fat prophet of... He said, they may even buy you a car sometimes. I said, eh. I preached like this in Cape Town some years back. One Congolese pastor heard me preaching. After the service, we were in the, in the, uh, the green room, whatever you call it. And as we were talking there, he said, man of God, I haven't had this kind of a teaching in a long time. He said, I myself, I'm scared to preach it. So he invited me, he said, come and preach. For three days, I said, I will preach it. Because after I preach, I just go away. If they are angry, they remain with you. <laughs> yeah, they remain with you. He said, don't let anybody spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of people. In our industry, you can't succeed unless you give somebody something. What a lie. What a lie. The man of these days, a man will not marry you unless you give him a child before you get married. What a lie. No, no, no. You, don't, you have to understand the city life. City life. Accommodation is scarce. So since you are going to get married eventually, you can stay together. What a lie. What a lie. Hey, it doesn't make sense. How, how do you, 100% is not enough. Now you are saying I should give God 10%. Or oh, 10% never. Is it once off? Or oh, is, 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 oh, is it once, once off I can agree? Christianity is not a subscription. Look at the foolishness of people. A person who subscribes on DSTV 700 per month cannot pay a tithe of 500 per. A person who Netflix is drawing out of them. In fact, Netflix just increased their, their, their affairs. Yeah, the, the, the subscription, they increased. I think by around $1.50 or something like that. Everything is increasing. Yeah. The price of cars in America, they are up. Sneakers, they are up. Everything is increasing. In fact, the other day I was reading an article. Rolex has increased all their prices. So don't blame your country. Say, Masisi, Masisi. It's not Masisi. The whole world. The whole world. They are trying to recover. But you know, when, when you are connected to the system of the kingdom, these things don't bother you. They don't bother you. Fuel prices are up. Don't let anybody spoil you through the vain deceit. How the world has accepted things. No. Look at verse 9. For in Christ dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Try it in the Amplified, please, if you can. Amplified. Try it in the Amplified. For in, the, in him the whole fullness of deity the Godhead continues to dwell in bodily form. Look at what he says. Giving complete expression of the divine nature. You are in Christ. He is the hope of glory. You know what that means? When you are in Christ, I think it's verse 10. Please try for me verse 10. Look at what verse 10 he says. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality in the Amplified. And you... Oh my word, I love this verse. And you are in him. Say, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. You are made full. Say, I'm made full. I'm made full. Having come to the fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead. Did you hear that? You too are filled with the Godhead. That is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm not an ordinary human being. I am filled with the Godhead. A believer walking in this world is the expression of God himself. The totality of the Godhead. That's why when we say don't mess around with your life, it's because we know what we are saying. You are the career of everything that God is. You can't look at your child and say stupid. 
The moment God calls something, it becomes. When you tell your child, stupid, why did I even have you? You know, there are parents who say that. Worse, when you are a Christian now, and your child comes to church because of you, and your child hears you calling them that. Yeah. When you are angry, you tell your wife you are a witch. You seduced me, you witch. You bewitched me, child of the devil, wizard. You seduced me. Be very careful. Be very careful. There is an entire Godhead inside you. He says you also reach full spiritual stature. Christ is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. Christianity is access into everything that you could ever be. Access into God. Access into the life of abundance. Access into no retrogression ever. But many don't know that. Because they don't upgrade themselves. When you study the word of God, you discover the more, who am I? What am I able to do? Who is the richest man on earth right now? Is it, is it, is it, is it uh, Elon Musk? Is it Elon Musk? Imagine Elon Musk comes. And because you have never seen him physically, he comes by, presses the intercom, hello, hello. My name is Elon Musk. Can I please talk to you? Elon who? Musk. We don't want masks. No, Musk is my say name. Can I please talk to you? Finally, you are like, okay, let me be nice. You open the gate. He comes in and he's like, he says, look, I need a place to crash for a few days. I am a businessman. I have um, investments in the U.S. And you're like, okay, what investments? Is that Tesla? He said, Tesla. Tesla. Okay, Tess, no problem. So, why do you want a place to crash? What's, what's, what happened with you? No, 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 I'm still sorting out my things. Oh, okay, no problem. Anyway, uh, I have a spare room. You give Elon Musk a spare room for some few days, right? Some few days. And then you are renting out that house. And one of the days, it's month end, the landlord comes by and says, hey, I want my rent. So he's knocking at the door. You see, oh, it's a uh, landlord. You go out of the house and you close the door so that your guests don't hear what you are conversing on, right? And you're like, hello, hello, uh, uh, hello, sir. He says, uh, where is my rent? Say, talk down. There are people inside. Say, I can't talk down. It's my money. Shh. I, I, will, I will arrange something before the end of today. I will arrange something. Okay, no problem. You get inside the house. You say to Elon Musk, whom you don't know who he is. Hey, Elon, I'm going to town. I'll be back later. Help yourself in the fridge with anything, right? So you go. Where are you going? To the bank. You're trying to get an overdraft. They tell you, you already have an overdraft. We can't overdraft, overdraft. You call your friend. Hey, guy, can you top me up with this much? Now, the time is going. And you can see the landlord is about to come. He threatened me in the morning. You get back to the house. You have not been able to get the money. You find Elon Musk again. He's like, hey, you, look, you look somehow. Is everything fine? Said, no, everything is fine. Everything is fine. You look uh, absent man. Ah, no, don't worry. Everything is fine. And that's the end of my story. What does the story mean? Many people... Because they don't know who Christ is. They can leave Christ in the house. And go and seek help externally. You just left Elon Musk. Who could have wired your entire rental of the next 10 years? No, forget even rental. He could have bought you a house. You have a powerful man in the house. But because you don't know him, you don't even know what Tesla is. You don't know what Elon Musk is. You, you, are, you are living with the richest man on earth. 
But because you don't know, you keep seeking help elsewhere. Christ is in you. I said Christ is in you. That's why people would rather go for counseling than to pray. They would rather call, Pastor, hey, Pastor, things are burning. Is the pastor the fire department man? <laughs> things are hot. Cool them. Find ice block. Christ is in you. The one who is the, the embodiment of the Godhead. He is inside you. The devil should not be pushing you around anyhow. You heard the testimony of that young. He said, no, I felt my, my throat was sore, but I didn't allow it. You know, there are people who allow sickness and they live with it. They have learned to live with it. I have ulcers. I don't eat this. When God made everything for your eating, what I don't eat is my decision. I don't eat sushi. It's my decision. If I want, I can. But I just don't want to eat it. You think I'm scared of sushi? If I'm not scared of pani, how would I be scared of sushi? I eat pani, it's my choice. I don't eat olives, it's my choice. I don't like strawberry, it's my choice. I don't like, uh, what else? Beetroots, <laughs> the rest. I don't like beetroots. It's my choice. But not that, uh, I'm not eating them because I'm like, oh, if I eat beetroots, uh, I'm going to develop some rashes in my body. No, sir. It's my choice. I don't want to eat this thing. It's my choice. Whatever you are, let it be your choice, not because you can't have it. Because Christ is in you, the one who made all things. Do you realize that the earth is heaven because of you? Somebody's like, what do you mean by that? What did God say about heaven? Heaven is my, my throne. The earth is my footstool. So, the pastor is sitting in a chair. You all are sitting on chairs, right? Your body is on the chair, but your feet are on the ground. So, God's feet are on the earth. If God was to walk, he's not walking on the chair. Stand up. Walk over there. Is he walking on the chair? No. He is walking on what is his foot too. So if God is walking up and down in heaven, come back. If he's walking up and down, it means that he's walking on the earth. You see this man? He's not walking in the chair. Only your children walk on the chairs. But there are some of you, 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 you usually do this on your couch. You don't know the price of your couch. Thank you. Now, because of you, heaven is heaven because of God. Wherever God is, it is heaven. I should tell you something right here. When we say something is a throne, we don't mean a specially designed chair. Whatever a king sits on, it's called a throne. If a king was to sit on your chair, the one that you are sitting on, they will be calling it the throne. Simply because the king sat on it. Simply because the king is on it. The throne is not a specially designed chair. It is wherever the king sits on. Now that you have the Godhead, wherever you walk is heaven. Wherever you walk is heaven. You cannot be crying over the economy of the world. You are heaven. Somebody's like, oh really? Yeah. The Bible says you are an ambassador. You are an ambassador. The U.S. embassy right at the government enclave, that land is called America. It is not Botswana. It is in Botswana, but it is not Botswana. The Botswana police don't have the jurisdiction to enter in and do anyhow. Is somebody hearing? You are heaven. Your house is a palace. When you enter your house, you have entered the palace. Praise the Lord. You carry the Godhead inside you. Don't let the devil push you anyhow. Don't allow any kind of thoughts in you. Oh, I'm depressed. Deep, deep what? 
the what for a child of God. The crying must stop. You are crying over a boyfriend. God doesn't cry over a person who begs lead. My boyfriend left me. <laughs> if a person backslides, the lesser has left the greater. The lesser has left the greater. If your boyfriend dumps you, the lesser I came for you. I, I'm benefiting you. <laughs> now that God is benefiting you, you are the one, you are going to cry. <laughs> God should cry that you are backsliding. All this threatening God, I will backslide. Go. Did you die for God to be God? Did, did you sacrifice for God to be God? Your powers are for, because of me. Between you and God, who needs who? Without God, you are nothing. Without you, God is God. Uh, uh, I will backslide. I will backslide. With all pleasure. See, when you don't understand these things like this, you live a beggarly life. You beg for jobs. You beg for contracts. You beg for relationships. An abusive person, emotionally, verbally. But because you don't want to be single, you just stay. You just stay. I will not beg a member because they are the, the, they tithe a lot. Because the funny thing is this, I don't even know how much you tithe. See, when people come in the front, do you see me looking at their envelopes? <laughs> Wena, you are an asset to this church. You are an asset. Wena, you are an asset. And when I'm preaching, I'm calling, hey, Mr. Soren, so you are at the back. <laughs> come and sit in my chair. <laughs> come and sit in my You look foolish. There are people when you are around you, you say, <laughs> you are here. <laughs> A girl you are interested in. Every time she's around, you act like you act like you act like the water that is melting. <laughs> it is you. <laughs> that girl will never say yes to you. Forever. Forever. Even if she was interested by your looks, this behavior. Can I tell you something that the women are telling me recently? They say they want manly men. Lutul. Manly men. Not spinous men. No, a man that is a man. Manly men. Because a man can be gender. But you want a man that is a real man. Not by gender only. You don't know what you want. Where to go. You don't have a you don't, control of life. You, you are, what kind of a man are you? Then you are saying sisters are wicked. They are not wicked. You don't have a stand. Even the Bible says, having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Stand. Stand. This is what I'm doing. One of the battles of men is to stand their ground. Sir, a, a woman can say something to you. I, I, I'm preparing for love training. A woman can say something to you. She, tomorrow, if she tells you you are preparing for a wedding, oh baby, I want, I want, I want chicken licking, I want wings, and then you take the money you had to buy her ring with, and then you buy the chicken licking. Tomorrow, when she says, when are we buying the ring? You're like, I can't you, we bought chicken licking the other day. She's like, are you for real? How can you use the money for the rings to do that? But you are the one. I know when you are angry and how you will act. Take your stand. Be persuaded about something. The reason why some of you guys are miserable is because you think that, okay. So, upgrade your mind. <laughs> hey, the way you are concentrating. The way you are concentrating. They are like, the service is turning into love train. We like it. Uh -uh, upgrade your mind first. Before you think of a love life, upgrade your mind. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse 8. Listen to this. Philippians 4 verse 8. Let's do it in the TPT so that we can catch up with 
time. He says, so keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic. On all that is what? Authentic and what? Real. On all that is what? The next word? Honorable. Honorable and what? Admirable. Keep your thoughts fixed on all that is the next word. Beautiful. Beautiful and what? Respectful. Keep your thoughts fixed on all that is the next word. Pure. Pure and what? Holy. Keep your thoughts fixed on what? Next word. Merciful and what? Kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God. Praising him always. Praising him always. You see, Philippians 4 verse 8 is the definition of the thinking pattern of a child of God. If it is not authentic, if it is not real, if it is not honorable, if it is not admirable, if it is not respectful, I won't allow it in my mind. Let's try the Mrs. Bible of the same, please. If you can, Mrs. Bible. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Summing it all up, friends, I would say you will do your best by filling your mind and meditating on things true, things noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, and gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things that are full of praise, not things to curse. This is what you have to think on. As you upgrade your mind, they are, the, they are the things that you must build your mind on. Someone said human beings can alter their lives by changing their thinking attitude. The most important estate in life is the mental estate. Is the mental estate. Mental estate. Come. One, two, three. Come. The three of you. Stand here. I'm glad you are all wearing nearly black, 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 black like that. Man is a spirit. Has a soul. And lives in what? A body. Now, this order is exactly how man is. Why? We are made in the image of God, right? God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Man is spirit, soul, and body. Watch this. When man fell into sin, it was the second person of the Godhead who brought man out of sin. The second person of the Godhead who represents the mind, the soul. If the second person of the Godhead had not done anything about it, man would have continued in the state of sin. Even though the father made man to enjoy the blessings, that is his original intent. But his intent was shattered, but, and all he needed was the second person of the Godhead, which is Jesus, to restore man. Until the second person does something, everything the father intended will never manifest by the spirit. Is somebody hearing? Let's bring it down to the, 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 the concept of man. Man is a spirit. Primarily, you are a spirit. You are not the body that you live in. The body is the house, is the case. It is not who you are. You are spirit. But you have a soul. And you live a physical life on the outside. Watch this. Your spirit man, when you get born again, is the one that gets born again. Is somebody hearing? Is the one that receives all the deposits of God. The Holy Spirit is one with your spirit. Not with your body. Not with your mind. With your spirit. Why? The Bible says God is 
spirit. And you also, as one made in the image of God, you are spirit. Are you capturing? Now, watch this. An upgraded spirit. An upgraded spirit that has, been, that has received revelation. I know who I am. Christ is in me. The hope of glory. The Godhead in bodily form is inside me. All of these things that you are speaking of yourself or that the word says of yourself, they are in your spirit. All right? They are in your spirit. That they are in your spirit does not mean they will reflect in your body. Does not mean they will reflect in your outer world. This is where many believers are confused. Because they are like, if you are telling me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But on the outside, I seem to be weak. I can't do the all things that the Bible says I can do all things. Sir, in your spirit, you are richer than Elon Musk. In your spirit, you are wiser than Thomas Edison. You are wiser than any scientist you can think of. In your spirit, you are the perfect image of everything good. But watch this. An upgraded spirit. You have studied the word. You know what the word says about you. Things will not manifest in your outer world without the permission of the soul. Is somebody hearing? Now, watch this. If I have this handkerchief and I give it to this individual, let's call him Jeffrey. I don't know why Jeffrey, but Jeffrey, right? So, let Jeffrey out. So, I give Jeffrey this handkerchief that, this is your handkerchief, sir. Jeffrey does not have a handkerchief. You see? Nothing. Can you see? Nothing. Nothing. So, I've given Jeffrey the handkerchief. Because the handkerchief is not a physical material to give to the spirit. So, in his spirit, he knows I have a handkerchief. In his physical world, he's not seen the handkerchief. Why? It has not been released yet from the spirit to the physical world. How do we release it to the physical world? He must now come and tell the, the soul. Come and whisper to the soul, we have a handkerchief. Yeah. When he tells the soul, we have a handkerchief. Now, the soul begins to imagine a white thing. Ah. We have it. White. Wow. We can wipe our sweat with it. We can do all kinds of stuff with it. Oh, handkerchief. Okay. And then, in the soul now, the soul begins to manufacture ways to get the handkerchief. Because the soul has been told we have a handkerchief and these are the usages of it. So the soul begins to map the way for the handkerchief. Before you know it now, the handkerchief manifests physically in the body. In the outer world. Now, watch this. Imagine I tell him, you have a Rolls Royce. The spirit knows we have a Rolls Royce. Go and tell the soul we have a Rolls Royce. Tell the soul, we have a Rolls Royce. And then the soul is asking, what? Ask, what? What's that? So now, be confessing because you are trying to understand what Rolls Royce is. I don't know what is Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce phantom. And then, watch this, ghost. And then he now, he now goes. And, 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 and he goes to Rolls Royce dealership because he had they have a Rolls Royce, right? So he gets there, says, Do you have a Rolls Royce? Yeah, we do. Do you have ghost? Yeah. How much is it? 6.5 million pula. What? Leave that. He comes back. He stands here. The spirit keeps on whispering. We have Rolls Royce. And then he looks concerned. Look concerned. How will we get it? How, how will we get it? I mean, it's expensive. And I don't have money for that. 
And then finally he decides. He tells the spirit. He, the spirit is talking. He pushes the spirit away. Don't talk to me. Turns his back on the spirit. Don't even bring that idea anymore. Guess what? The body will never experience Rolls Royce. Why? Because the mind blocked it. I get back to this to make this point clearer. In your spirit is the fullness of the Godhead. God resides in your spirit. God resides where? In your spirit. Meaning that if God was to talk to you, if God was to suggest anything, he will suggest it in your spirit that you can walk in divine health. You can get married this year. Now let me ask this question. Have you ever had an impression in your mind out of nowhere? They're like, ah, I wouldn't mind that. It entered your mind, right? Where was it coming from? Your spirit. Where do thoughts come from? Your spirit. And then your mind now, your mind decides whether to let them in or to close them out. I wonder how many things you have closed out. I wonder how many things you have blocked from the spirit. Ah, get this, get this, get this. In the spirit, there are no limitations. Remember, the spirit is where God is. And if it is spirit, it means spirit, we can also say spirit is air, right? Like wind, pneuma, wind. The air blows wherever it wants to blow. <sighs> Squee, that's the air. It has no limitations. The air is not like this chair. I can't put this chair in a bottle, can I? No, but the air can enter the bottle. If the bottle is open, the air just gets through. So God is spirit. There are possibilities in your spirit. Anytime you get a suggestion in your mind of something that you can do, you know why people keep on getting back into relationships no matter how many times they get heartbroken? Because their spirit does not know heartbreak. Your spirit keeps saying, no, there is a man. Surely a man exists. There is a woman who exists who can make me feel good. Who will be a good partner. You get a heartbreak. You're like, I will never. Men are dogs. I will never. Hey, <laughs> Somehow, you keep on hoping. Why do you keep on hoping? After so many turn downs and turn offs and breakdowns and all kinds, you keep on hoping because your spirit does not know I was rejected. Your spirit is not, your spirit does not know it can be. Your spirit doesn't know it can be. So your spirit keeps suggesting to you. Suggesting to you. Suggesting to you. Now, what your spirit suggests is at the mercy of this gentleman here called the soul. When a believer gets born again, their spirit is reunited with God. That is the vast resources of heaven are inside you. News flesh, sitting right in front of me, sitting next to you, sitting behind you and before you, is somebody who carries heaven. I mean the totality of heaven. Gold is not in the South African gold mines. Oil is not in the Middle East. There is oil inside you. Diamonds are not in Jwane. They are inside you. Healing is not at Princess Marina or Sidilera. Healing is inside you. Money is not at the Bank of Botswana or Bank Raborone or Absa or FNB. Money is inside you. Your wisdom is not at the University of Botswana. It is not at Limco Queen or Baisao. Your wisdom is inside you. Your success is not in the British pounds in Europe. It is not in that tender. Don't get your, it confused. Don't get it confused. All that you need for life, godliness, and success is inside you, in your spirit. You wake up with it in you. You walk with it every day. That's why Paul, did, 
rather, Paul, what did I say? Call, Paul did. Paul called it. Paul called it a mystery. It's a mystery because how we never thought that all that we, we need could be inside us, working with it. Anytime you are talking, it's inside you. It's inside. How do you feel when you write an exam and get 40%? How do you feel when you want to buy something but your bank account does not have enough money? How do you feel? Let me tell you, every frustration of unmet expectations or unfulfilled desires is the frustration that is from your spirit. Because your spirit man says, nothing should be impossible. So when you get frustrated, it's because your spirit does not know what a turn down is. Why do people cry when somebody disappoints them? Because there is something inside you that says there is a world of no disappointments. There is a world of no pain. There is a world of no sickness. When, you, when somebody gets sick, they don't sit back and say, well, I like this sickness. It's very nice. You go to the hospital. Why? Because something inside you believes there is a world of no sickness. Why is it that when you get all the money that you could need to buy anything, you get excited? Because something inside you gets excited when you can afford everything. Because you are supposed to naturally afford everything. Why do you get excited when you get a 99% in that test? Because something in you knows that you are not stupid. I am not stupid. It is in your spirit. But your mind, your mind is the one that controls whether what is in your spirit will ever find reflection in your outer world. Your spirit can tell you it can be done. And your mind tells you, don't try it. She's out of your league. Don't try it. You don't qualify. You heard the testimony earlier. He said, me, I don't even know anything about managing property and all of that. Based on you, you can't do it. But your spirit knows I can. Your spirit knows I can. Now, here it is. A believer in Christ, with all the resources in their spirit, their greatest power is simply this. Romans 12. And verse 2. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By what? The renewing of your mind. That is very key. I've told you before, the word transformed there is the Greek word metamorphose. Where a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. And Paul is showing us, you can change your status from a crawling being to a flying being, provided you renew your mind. He didn't say your mind will be new. He didn't say be transformed by acquiring a new mind. He said renew, renew, renew. My English teachers, renew. Re, new. It means that there was a time it was new. It used to have this state before. Now he's saying, get back to that state. Renew. It was new before. When was it new? Oh my God. Did you get the call of destiny? We gave it to everybody for free last time. If you didn't get it, it's your problem. When a child is young, when a child is young, they don't know what bills are. They don't know what mortgage is. They don't know what installments are. They don't know what taxes are, income tax. A child does not know affordability. They don't know what rate per hour means. A child doesn't know that. Dividends, they don't know. Pass rate, they don't know. So you leave your house and the child will be telling you, Daddy, bring me an aeroplane. They don't know what that you need money to buy it. Right? Some of you parents, the worst times that you could ever have, if I was to call it the worst, was when you go to the stores with your kids. 
You go with your budget list. Yeah, I'm going to buy you. You pass by a biscuit. That child gets the biscuit, refuses to let it go. Cries until the entire supermarket is watching you. Like wicked father, wicked father, buy for the child. And you end up removing margarine to put biscuit. And tomorrow when they are eating their bread and you have not put margarine, they are crying. You try to explain, if you remove margarine to put your biscuit, they don't care. They are playing and they are playing house. Look at how kids start up in life. They are playing house. I'm making tea. I'm making tea. Pour the tea. Uh, take and drink. Uh, okay. We are going to the mall. We are going to the mall. If God started your life like that, you know foundations matter. It means that your life must continue like that. When did you stop the childlike attitude in a mature way? Kids live in an imaginary world. Don't stop imagining. Some people became adults and they stopped living. Real life is not what you see out there. Real life is in the mind. Real life is in the imagination. So kids, and, 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 and it has been discovered, the first five years of a child are called the formative years. They are the most important period in a child's life. A child's future is made or broken in the first five years. All of a sudden, you just live by, let's go to work, work, come back home. No imagination. No envisioning anything. So when he said renew your mind, he meant get back to that mind that was so pure. There was a time your mind was pure. You will see somebody driving by with an S class and you're like, one day I will drive that car. Did you say that at some point? That you will drive that car? Did you pass by the golf estate and saw a double story mansion and said I will stay in a house like that? Did you envision your wedding day and say I'm going to wear a wedding gown like this? Did you envision your wedding day when you saw in that movie something bore witness with you? I now present to you Paris. Did you see that and say one day my cake will look like the Eiffel Tower? Is that what you said? Is that what you said that one day I'm going to have kids, me, my wife. Did you see a couple sitting down with their kids at a restaurant eating and the kids were behaving well? And you're like, oh, goose, goose. There was a time you thought it that way. Now, over a period of time, your mind got worn out by the events of life, by the happenings of life. So Paul comes and says, renew. Get back to the purity of that mind. Where did you lay your imaginary world? When did you stop imagining? When did you start accepting this as you? When did you say, the person you are now, when did you say, well, I guess it's who I am. No, this is me. I guess some of us are not cut out for certain things. Listen to the statement. Some of us are not cut out for certain things. I guess, I, I guess this is my reality. Naba, 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 all the time. I guess I'm like that. Maybe I should give up on this mojolo thing. Maybe I should. I guess business is not my thing. I tried this one. I tried the garbage business. I tried this one. I tried that one. It just didn't work. You look at somebody who is succeeding. And you're like, but what about like? Let me tell you the worst way of seeing successful people. You always suspect them. She's my age. We were in the same school. In fact, she was not smarter than me. Have you ever seen people who are not smarter than you? Who are not smarter than you? Living it out better than you. And you started justifying it. Hmm. Had the Mogolo Berkoko PPADB. 
You started justifying it. No, I heard she had a sugar daddy some time back, and then the man died, and then the man had left her some things. You start justifying it. When your imaginary world has stopped existing, you start suspecting anybody that has something that is better than you. You know, most people criticize what they want. You look at a pastor, you're like, huh? The way he is like, huh, huh. Huh. Instead of learning, you now criticize it because it is not your reality. You see a couple holding hands every time they look at you like they are pretending. I want to pay you, you, you need to make him fully more than you. Back, I want to sip it. When I'm in the jam, I'm going to buy one tata. Just because, baby girl, your your imaginary world has been contaminated, corrupted. You are forever investigating. You are forever believing the worst about people. When someone comes and tells you, hey, you know what has happened with Wittumel? You know what? I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I knew something was up. Why are you quick to believe in the worst about people? Because you have experienced the West. Because you are the West. It's not an insult. I'm just telling it as it is. You are the West. You have experienced the West. You have become the West by adopting the West as your reality. If you have made it in life out of nowhere, three universities, four courses, failed all of them. Build your mind, start a church, and get somewhere. When someone comes and says, I only did standard seven, but now see me, my business is worth 100 million pula. I'm like, I can believe you. Because I too know what it means to come out of nothingness and get to where I am. The reason why you don't believe some people's stories is because your story is just that story story. It has never become a reality. The reason why we don't believe certain sermons, we are always suspicious. Ah, oh, they want money from us. Ah, oh, somebody must have said something to him. It's because you think everybody is faking it like you are faking it. When the prophecy is given, there is somebody here like this. You're like, mm, someone must have told him. Someone must have told him, nah, 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 nah. Can't be true. <laughs> you know, one of my father says, some people, he was giving word of knowledge and people were getting blessed. And some people started talking against him. And they said, where does he get the power? You know what they said, what they said where he gets the power? Because he's using this microphone that, like my own, the lapel, like, like this. So with the lapel, you have to put your, you see this thing? What, what do you call this thing? DJ, the receiver. Pardon? The transmitter. The transmitter is over there, right? This is the receiver. That's the receiver. This is the transmitter. Okay, transmitting to the receiver. So they said, watch him when he's preaching. There is something at his back. That's where he gets all the power. Look at foolishness on steroids. <laughs> Look at their ignorance. They, they think the power is here. This thing is for the microphone. Ever, ever since they started using this microphone, this one, ah, he says things about us. It means he, he, he got the power in Cape Town. He put it here. In Cape Town. Put it here. Because you have never heard the voice of God. Anybody who claims to have heard, it's a lie. It's a lie. What is your mind blocking from actualizing in your outer world? This is why Paul says, be transformed, be metamorphosed by the renewing of your mind. Until your mind is renewed, your spirit will forever be frustrated. Thank you, gentlemen. And where is my handkerchief? It's an example of bring. Until your mind is renewed, your spirit will forever be frustrated. When a person like me comes and says, I've never been sick in so many years, you are like, it's not true. 
You mean even headache? Headache is not true. Just because if you are a pastor, you'll be eating the church money. When you see someone like me blessed, they're like, he's eating our money. Most people who say he's eating our money never give. <laughs> he's eating our money. Those who give don't complain about the eaten money because they have more. And they are blessed. They don't complain about it. <laughs> it is those who give 10 pula, 1 pula, 5 pula. Now he's eating our money. With what? It's not even streetwise too. Or streetwise. Or street foolish. He's eating our money. Have you seen? Have you, have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you seen that? You know, we are so blessed in this church. We have people getting married all the time. People getting married. But how many people question that? How many people question that? Mm. We wonder if Mayala tell us to wrong. Maybe they hook them up. I can go hook you up. No, I hooked you up. No, I can hook you up by the call bed. With, with, do, do I hook you up? I I'm the one. Can you can you can you like it? I'm the one who went and talked for you, right? Am I the one? Am I the? I'm the one. Now you see, when you do something, they start questioning it. When they realize it's like ah, ah this thing is continuing because continuity sometimes is the proof of authenticity. The important word is sometimes. They now start looking for other. No, no, no. My yana tenga has to And you know what? They are waiting for just one thing to go wrong with one of the people. One person out of 99, they say, mm -mm -mm -mm. We knew it. We knew it. You don't know anything. Shut up. You will forever remain a critic until you become a success. Successful people are less critical about others. In fact, they rejoice in the stories that are not theirs. When a person says, I've succeeded like that, I, I want to listen to this. You know, there are people who listen to you with an attitude. They are listening to go and contaminate it when they say it to somebody else. Say, hey, hey. We, we, we took it out of the try. No, she's a beautiful young lady. She loves the Lord, but hey, she's too good to be true. The way she's always looking like she's humble. Now I think she's faking it. Every time you meet her, shalom. Every time, shalom. Just because when your mouth is shalom, <laughs> doesn't mean we are all going to say shalom. No, she's fake. You only get intimidated. When you have not understood what you have inside you. For me, when I see somebody blessed, I get excited. Because it says to me, God is still in the business of blessing. Yeah. Yeah. God is still in the business of blessing people. The mind is very powerful. An empowered spirit requires an empowered mind. In order for that mind to not argue with the spirit. Hey, Jeffrey, come back. Jehuri, come back. Watch this. Spirit, soul, and body. Whoever wins two-thirds of the elections becomes the ruling party, right? When you got born again, God already won one-third. Are you capturing? When you renew your mind, you have already won 
two-thirds of the elections. Which means when the spirit suggests to the soul, the soul easily accepts what the spirit is saying and the body has no choice. Is somebody hearing? That's why mental renewal is very crucial. Now, watch this. When the mind is not renewed and the body is used to the life of old, the spirit will suggest the mind and the body will vote against the spirit. So the spirit suggests you can walk in divine health. The mind is like, I am, this is HIV. There is no cure. The body is like, you don't know the pain I've been feeling. And the tests that were run from a sample of my blood. So the mind and the body votes against the spirit. That's how sometimes, underline sometimes, people remain sick. Because their mind is not renewed to believe in divine health. That's how sometimes people remain poor. Their minds are not renewed to believe in riches. Oh, let me say something right here. You can tithe all you want and still remain poor if your mind is not renewed to believe in prosperity. Why? Because God blesses through ideas with commercial value. So after tithing and you come here, lift your tithe, you lift it. You are blessed. As you are walking back, your spirit will tell your mind and say, start this kind of a business. You're like, ah, hey, those things don't exist here. <laughs> those things don't exist here. And what has happened at that point? You have missed the blessing of that tithe by blocking what the spirit was saying. Obeying scriptural demands is primarily from a renewed mind. You know why people can't do certain things in the house of God? Because their minds are not yet convinced. So the body and the mind, they are voting from the old system. You mean after 10 years, you are not in a service unit? It's very simple. You have not renewed your mind. You may have renewed it in marriage. That's why you got married. You may have renewed it in finances. That's why your business is working. But you have not renewed it to see the benefits and the power of kingdom service. So your body will tell you, I am tired. And your mind will say, indeed, you work the whole week, rest. Your spirit will say, but your destiny is tied there. They vote against it. Am I preaching good to somebody here? So, you must renew your mind so that your spirit doesn't struggle in making suggestions. And when your spirit makes suggestions, it is God making suggestions to your mind. Is somebody hearing? And when the voting has to be done, a renewed mind will always vote with an empowered spirit. And the body has no choice but to flow. So watch this. Healing is not based on what you do to your body. You eat. You say you eat correctly. All manner of things. It's not from there. Have you ever had the tiredness that is not because you have worked? You are just tired. You say, I'm tired inside. I'm just tired. I'm tired. Why are you tired? Your mind can't handle certain things. Your spirit has been weighed down. Your body can't flow. So when you see people like Bishop Pedro saying, I work 18 hours, his strength is not from his body and the bodily exercises that the Bible says profiteth little. He receives power from the spirit saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the mind accepts that. And virtues are sent to the body. So your body is no longer surviving by your gym exercise. It's surviving by the virtues of the spirit. Can I say something right here? In trying to be relevant as believers, in trying to be relevant, we end up becoming human more than spiritual. There is nothing wrong with budgeting. But if budgeting squashes this, the, 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 
the suggestions of your spirit, then budgeting has not worked its function. Let me say this, that will also bless you. The purpose of the mind is not to decide whether to take what your spirit is suggesting or to reject it. The purpose of the mind is to receive from the spirit what the spirit is suggesting and map the way to actualize it. So, when the spirit suggests to the mind, Rolls Royce, you are looking at me. The mind now comes and goes to Rolls Royce. The mind checks the price. How much is the Rolls Royce? They tell him 5.5 million, right? And he knows that I don't have the 5.5 million right now cash as mine. And so I'm going to believe God for it. That you don't have the resources that the mind needs does not mean reject it. The spirit says you are getting married this year. You check your savings. They are not enough. You ask your girlfriend, how much is the average lobola in your place? They say, nah. How much is the average lobola in your place? Anytime anything is presented to you that looks like a challenge to what your spirit suggested to your mind, don't back down. It is an opportunity to renew your mind to see the possibilities. That's why after the suggestion, if your mind now says to you, this is too big, you can't do it. This is too big, you can't get it. What must you do? Help me with your Bible. What must you do? You now go to the word. As far as my mind is concerned now, this is undoable. Right? Your spirit does not suggest because your mind is ready for it. Your spirit suggests because it's the season for it. Your mind may not be ready for it. A wise believer gets the suggestion and then goes to the scriptures. Looks for the relevant word. So that the mind can see the possibilities of it. And now, the mind goes through what Joshua advises. Man, I'm loving this morning's teaching. I have to close. It's half past. The mind now goes through what, the, what Joshua suggests. This book of the law shall not depart out of your what? Your mouth, not your mind. Out of your mouth. But how is it not going to depart from your mouth? You shall meditate day in, day and night. Right? So, my mind has not accepted I can get a Rolls Royce of 5.5 million pula. My mind doesn't think it's possible. My mind has seen all the physical evidence. So, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. I want to speak it, but when I speak it, I feel like I'm lying. I own a Rolls Royce. You know you don't own it. You know, have you ever, have you ever confessed something and your mind is telling you it's a lie? You know why your mind is telling you it's a lie? Because your mind is not yet convinced. Now that I think I can own a Rolls Royce, 5.5 million pula worth, I must convince my mind. What do I do? I go to the word. He says, it should not depart out of your mouth. Why mouth? Because the mouth is the creative tool of God. And we are made in the image of God. The mouth is for creating. But for it to be in your mouth, it must be in your, your mind. So I go, I study the word. For it to be in my mind, it does not mean, watch this. I'm trying to look for a word. It does not mean awareness. Many are aware of what the scriptures are saying, but they are not convinced of what they are aware of. So many Christians know that God heals, and yet they don't get healed. And yet they can opt for other options, or rather go for other options, when they are faced with a situation of what they are aware of. So what do I do? I am aware God can provide, but I'm not convinced, right? 
That's why my mind keeps on saying we can't afford. There is nothing you can't afford. Go to the word. He says meditate. The word meditate is the word hagar. H-A-G-A-R. It means to go over something a couple of times. It means to matter. It means to think on a thing until you can be able to speak it out by being convinced. I'm closing, please. How do you know your mind is convinced of something? When you can say it and your mind doesn't say you are lying. When you can say it and your mind is still saying, go on, boy. This year is my year of elevation. And your mind says, go on, boy. This year, I'm getting my greatest achievement. Go on, boy. This year, I am getting into dimensions I've never been in. Go on, boy. The difference between a person who can heal the sick and one that can heal the sick is not the power of God. It is the conviction of your mind. I am convinced when I'm praying for a person that God is with me, the power of God is with me. As I lay hands on this individual, they will be healed and they will be healed now. So out of that conviction, I take a step of faith. Sir, be healed. Another person sees a sick person. They start asking questions. How long have you been sick? What are the doctors saying? Is there anything they can do? Uh, did you get a second opinion? Why are you asking a Lord? I don't like asking more questions because the more you ask questions, the more there is a chance of fear. Yeah. When a person tells you, no, the doctor says it's incurable, there's nothing they can do, da, 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 da. All that information, unless you are spiritually sound and your mind is so solid, all the information will contaminate your faith. The difference is how convinced are you? Studying the word of God is not to feed your spirit. Studying the word of God is to convince your mind so that when your spirit speaks to you, you will not block it. Sir, I believe in divine supplies. There is no day I can even wake up and doubt it. No day whatsoever. I believe in divine healing. No day I can doubt it. No day. I believe in God working things for my good. That, watch this. Even when you tell me something that uh, the house is burning and I'm busy on something, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm busy on this thing. I will come and see it. The reason why some of us react is because you are, you are not yet convinced. You know, their parents, if they hear their child, yeah, outside. One hour one hour Only to find that they were playing. The issue is not the kids. The issue is the mind that keeps on running to negativity. You are thinking the child has probably something fell on the child. You study the word to convince your mind. Anything that is bigger than you, that your mind can appreciate, get to the word. Let the mind appreciate it. And then now, get back, sir. And then now, watch this. The mind will be in the same platform as the spirit. And the body will have no choice but to manifest it. The world is using this principle. You read all these, uh, is it uh, uh, think and grow rich? They are using this principle. They convince yourself, I can do it. You know, I, I, I saw a video the other day of Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. He said he used to call himself before the money something. I think it was a pretty boy or something like that. I can't remember. Maybe you can Google it for me if you can. Pretty boy Floyd. He used to call himself pretty boy. He said, as long as I called myself pretty boy, yeah, I wasn't getting the blows to mess up my face. But the moment I called myself, what is it now? Money maker. He said, the moment I called myself the money maker, he said, deals worth millions and billions are coming. We were playing Monopoly some years back. We were with Pastor KB and the others. And Pastor KB was calling himself the big money spender. He said, I'm the big money spender. And guess what? Pastor KB kept on falling on our houses, falling on our hotels, because what is his name? 
big money spender. We said, change your name. <laughs> Ask anyone. We are playing FIFA. We are playing Monopoly. I will, I will start talking. I will start to say, all of you, you are going to be sending me all your things. Sir, I can start with an airport on Monopoly. I will buy all your houses. <laughs> I will buy all your houses. No matter how many times I have lost, I can never say I've lost. I'm like, you, I just gave you an opportunity. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't be beaten down. No matter how many times I fell down. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and still gets back up again. That you fell down two times does not make you a sinner. What makes you a Christian standing for long is not that you have not sinned. It's that you defied all sins that you ever entered into. I have fell into sin. I got up. I said, Jesus is Lord. Fall into sin. I get up. Jesus is Lord. Before you know it, Satan gets tired of trying to weigh you down and you keep on bouncing back. Convince your mind a good marriage is for me. That's why studying the word is most important. Studying the word is most important. It's crucial. Dr. Caroline Leaf, a Christian neurosurgeon, says about 90% of all sicknesses and diseases are mentally born. They are mentally born. I recommend her books. Who switched off my brain? Switch on your brain, Dr. Caroline Leaf. Get on YouTube, get her materials. She will show you. Anytime you speak a word and say, I can't. He says, she says, your, your brain nerves or something like that, they are like, they are like the branches of a tree. The moment you say, I can't, they turn black. When you say I can, they blossom and become green with the example of a, of a plant. You are not born with I can't. You are born with I can. But what, what has built the I can't? And I close it here. Jeffrey, out. Watch this. In my closing. What built mindset? Number one. Culture and tradition. What did I call it? Mark 7 verse 13. The Bible says, you have made the word of God of no effect because of your tradition. Because of your tradition. When the mind has been exposed to certain ways of doing things, the mind will resist the kingdom ways. How can I give my, my entire salary? You call it first fruit. How does that work? No, 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 no. You can't, no, 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 no. And then you have you see, sometimes when you are getting married and there is this old women and aunties and all of that, they are and they are planting wrong seeds. If one of your thing, not my own. I want to a So you live your life expecting your house. In fact, hi sani. Otsadi is the 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 pekir. Obo we ni sakabo mu akokota la mu di sanke. Korire hi apula ena metiaten. You are looking for fights. You are worried that you are not worried. You are fighting that you are not fighting. When somebody comes and says, today is our one year anniversary, we enjoy marriage. You are like, out after 10. <laughs> no, you have nine to go, my sister, nine to go. <laughs> On the ninth year, we are enjoying marriage. You are like, ba, 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 fi, ba. One pastor asked me, he said, where do you get money for church? You just did uh, that thing at GICC in the midst of COVID. Where do you get money for church? We are trying to recover, recuperate. Where do you get money? When you tell him, the people are giving. He says, no, 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 you are lying. Just tell us the truth. What's the secret? If it was a secret, would I tell you? <laughs> a secret made to be told. 
are secret. You see, the reason why some people don't succeed is because they have this thing, secret of success. If they are secret, it means they are hidden from you. Stop calling them secret. At least say keys to success. Wisdom for success. What's your secret, man of God? What's your secret? One time somebody asked me, he said, how many foreigners do you have in your church? I said, foreigners, to my knowledge, I think that time, I, only, I don't know if it was only Yumbi or we were just two or three or something like that, foreigners. I said, only two or three or something like that. He said, never. Botswana don't give. I said, exactly, Botswana don't give, but I have Christians. I don't have Botswana, I have Christians. Botswanas don't give, Christians give. They are renewed. They are in this world, but they are not of this world. Somebody asked me, how can you have a church and the average age is 25? Are they not troublesome? How about what they get out of the room? They get out of the room. They get out of But you know what? The very same person is complaining about adults because adults are not there all the time. And then he's complaining about the youth because the youth are full of energy and always bouncing here and there. <laughs> so who should we have now? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I have never complained about the elderly people, even those who are older than me in this church. They don't stress me. The young ones don't stress me. My age mates don't stress me and at all. If you are the one trying to stress me, it never entered. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you thought you were stressing me. Never. It never entered. The email bounced like that one of the testimony. <laughs> Destination does not uh, exist. You thought you were stressing me. You didn't stress me. It never arrived. Do I ever bother about somebody who has left the church? Not even once. Does it concern me? Why? Why must it concern me? When they were born, where was I? You were born in Mahu. I have not been there. You were born in a, in a garage. I wasn't there. You were born in a car. I wasn't there. You leave the church. Just as you came, go. Do, do I bother about people who criticize me? No. Opinion is the cheapest thing in the market. So you, you have your own choice. You can tell me that I'm stupid. There are people who don't like the way I do things. And they, do I like them myself? I think last week I was talking like this. Did I talk like this last week? Do I like them myself? Let me tell you something. You will never be liked by everybody. Don't try it. At the last Shiloh of December, Bishop Pedro said, there is no church that no people don't leave. So when people leave, it's normal. Now I've not experienced what Jesus experienced. One time, 5,000 people left Jesus. For what? For who? For where? Want to miss them? I have a scripture for them. And does it mean you don't care about people even when they go? Oh no, me, I love people. I care about people. Or I will stand with you. Or I will be loyal to you. I pray for you. I stand with you. I will stand with you. Yeah. Almost everyone who will be leaving, I still follow them. The last time I did that kind of followership was when somebody was having a birthday. They had not been coming to church for two years. I sent them a birthday message. They blue ticked me as a child of the devil. <laughs> Why did I even bother? I was just trying to be nice and say, you are blessed, have a, have a good birthday. I said, I retrieve everything I said. <laughs> child of the devil. When they come back, will you accept them? The same way I didn't chase them. <laughs> no, they can come back. What traditions and cultures are blocking you from experiencing the best of God? Ah, you know, Batwanas are never on time. We don't wait and say, let's wait for them to come a little bit. Let's wait for them to come. Have they come? Bye bye. Hey, but one of us slow. Not in this church. It's the ones who are not in this church. What cultures are blocking you from experiencing God? It 
in Mark chapter number 6 and verse 4. Is it Mark 6, 4? Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kindred, and in his own hometown. Verse 5. And he could dare do no mighty works, save that he laid hands on a few people and he healed them. The final one. And he marveled because of their unbelief. What traditions are making you to not believe God? What traditions are eluding you from God? We are always having a, a, a family, family reunion. We are hosting Dr. Mensah Otabi. You are saying family reunion. You are saying family reunion. We are hosting Miles Monroe. You are saying you are going on a trip. You are tripping what? That was the first and the last time Miles Monroe entered here. You missed it, and yet you were there. You know, there are people who are not there. One time I was at a, at a bank. I was at a bank. I was doing some transaction there. This man saw the name on the document. He said, oh, I'm happy. Are you the one who hosted Miles Monroe? This should be about three, four years later. I said, oh, yeah, we had Dr. Miles Monroe some few years back. He said, oh, you know, I'm so sorry he passed on. You know, that, that time I knew about the event, but yes, I don't know what happened. I didn't come. I regret not coming. The opportunities of God may never return. You may never hear someone like this ever in your life. To not practice it may be the end of it all. What cultures are making you to not believe the word of God? You know there are cultures in this nation that you must marry a woman from your own culture. You are a Christian. You remember Pastor KB? Because he's from, is it Bobono? Mugabe. Mugabe. And there is this statement that he quoted. And he is from Mugabe. 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 Bora is a pure. So anybody who comes from down south, according to him, when he meets a girl, he asks where the girl is from. If, if she's from the south of where he's from, never. You know, there are some of you who still hold those mentalities. That Nam Kalanga, which Ranka Banam Nam Kalaka, which is the whoa, Kuchan. Ah, ah, no good, no good. No good. Uh, oh. So every time you are in church, you are looking for a Kalanga man. You are looking for you are looking for a Kalanga Christian. Don't you realize that your culture has diluted you? You are Herero. You can't marry outside Herero. Those ones are very strong. They will tell you your marriage won't last if you don't marry a Herero. So you are Herero. You are looking for a Herero again. Looking for a Herero again. The reason why some Herero men in the church are not married is because they are looking for a Herero Christian. They are, they are mixing Christianity with their culture. I said what I said. I'm not retrieving it. Hallelujah. Eh. If you have a problem with me, come for counseling. What builds mindsets? Number two, past experiences. Past experiences. What you experience, if it is not handled, resides in you. You had an absent father. Every man is in trouble. When you are fighting with your boyfriend, you men, you always leave. Walk away. You always walk away. Walk, Johnny, walk away. Walk, walk, walk. Walk away. Walk away. You are not even talking to him. You are talking to your father who walked away from your mother when your mother was three months pregnant with you. Walk away. Walk. Johnny Walker. Walk. 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 You were in a church. The pastor was discovered that he ate the church money. Now you come to another church. Offering time, you're like, baby, simulo. The word offering time just acts you. It just gets you the wrong way. The moment you say offering time, it's just like, eh. You say, it's just. You know, some people do not realize how much their experiences have influenced them until they're teaching like this. You need to go and question yourself. 
There are some things that has happened in your past. You, may, you, you have swept them under the carpet. You have not dealt with them. That's why your actions on the surface are somehow. You don't realize it's because of what happened back then. You don't like yellow bones. Because a yellow bone show do dust. A yellow bone show do dust. You go to a business meeting. The man who comes to negotiate with you is yellow bone. Already you start with an attitude. Okay. So you want us to sponsor your event. For what? What are the reasons? The issue is not the reasons the man is presenting. The fact that he is yellow bone. And a yellow bone showed you dust. You know there are women who say, don't even marry a cute man. Marry a man who's just he, so that you, you can be sure of his life. <laughs> if you marry a man with good looks, hmm, hmm, hmm. skin care routine. Because we had one like that. And he showed you dust. How would you know your past experiences are holding you back? They have birthed certain decisions that you make unconsciously. You know you could have grown up in church. And when you were growing up in church, your father, your mother, who were probably in the church as elders, they never allowed you to wear certain clothes. Say, eh, you can't wear pants. Eh, eh, that skirt is too short. Do you know why some people right now are dressing the way they are dressing? Because their father restricted them from wearing short skirts. You are 49. 49. One year shy. One year shy from Jubilee. One year shy. But because you were deprived of it, you told yourself, when I leave this house, Strepezan, you are always banana. Always. Always. You are trying to answer your father in his absence. Your father may have passed on, but you are married with seven children. You are still stepezaning, stepezaning. Your children are teenagers. Oh, mama. Mama, temma. It's a school event. Mama, temma. Let, let, let us speak something for you, in fact. Your daughter is speaking something for you because she knows. <laughs> Who are you answering? Who are you answering? Past experiences can build the wrong mindset. Number three. Your exposure builds your mindset. Exposure. Family background. You know, growing up in a poor family can be a blessing. It can also be a curse. Let me show you how. You can come up from a poor family and you tell yourself, when I become rich, I'm going to help anyone so that no one, anyone who is poor, so that no one experiences what I experienced. Or you can grow rich and look at the poor and say, I was also poor. Look at the I was there too. Look where I am. I was there too. Look where I am. Your family background can make you stingy. Your mother told you, Harele me madi. You come to church. Family background, coins for God. You know, there are people when they've given 200 blood, they feel like they are holy. Like the highest note, you are holy. They feel like one of them go after service. One of them the way they greet you after service. They greet you like they give God their entire 200 put a note. Ah, who gives that? Ha, ah, hallelujah. Jesus answer my prayers. 200. Who told you you can't give 1,000 put? Let me tell you something. This thing turned on me this week, Pastor Nadi. Anytime I travel more, we do big events here. 2015, I traveled more. We, did, we started mega crossover. 2016, I traveled more. Pastor Matthew Asimolo arrived. 
when I less travel, it's like you are enough. No, I'm, I'm showing you me now. The more I travel, the more I think. The more I travel, the more I dare things that don't exist here. How did we have Pastor Matthew here? I went to IGOC 2015. I saw pastors and ah, it can happen. 2016, Pastor Matthew Asimolo was here. No, 2016, I went for IGOC. He was here. Same same year. You can never manifest what you don't think exists. That's why exposure is very key. Expose yourself through reading. Expose yourself in different platforms, workshops, travel. I believe in exposure. I don't believe in wasting our lives. Some people travel for fun. That's a waste of money. You can't live here and just go to Victoria Falls just to go and see the water flowing. After every trip, I write the things I have learned and where I got challenged. While I'm in the play, 30,000 feet up there, I am writing some things. I even write, I, 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 I turn on the screen to see how many feet above ground am I? I write that, what's the time right now? Where are we passing over? And I write, this is what I got. This is what I got. Don't waste trips. Don't waste exposure moments. Expose yourself. What have you been exposed to? Be careful of what exposes you. There are friends who expose you to wrong things. You have a friend who is married and is telling you about their concubine. Guess what? Tomorrow, your wife has angered you. You are thinking, hmm, that girl at work. Hmm. Hmm. Every exposure is a seed. If not dealt with, it will manifest. So if you don't deal with the exposure of traveling, you will manifest what you sow when you traveled. If you don't deal with the seed of somebody suggesting that you can steal money from the company you are working for, one day you will do it. Mary was told she would give birth to a child and she had not been with a man. So this is a miracle child, right? So in the book of Luke, Mary went to Elizabeth who was very old, but got pregnant miraculously. So Mary went to somebody who went ahead of her. Somebody who had the same miracle child. She stayed with um, Elizabeth for three months. For three months. For three months. Teach me how to handle this miracle. You are trying to start ministry. There is nobody you are exposed to. Even at my level, there are things I expose myself to because we have to change certain things, this one, that one. I don't read because I like books. I read because I like exposure. I like exposure. In this information world, sometimes you don't even necessarily have to travel. Right in your computer, you can see possibilities that are out there. Expose yourself. Mentoring. Expose yourself in prayer. Expose yourself in the word. Number four, how do you build mindsets, associations? He that walks with the wise shall be wise, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13 and verse 20, please, I'm closing. He that walks with the wise shall be wise, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. The message Bible says, you go around with fools and watch your life fall into pieces. Watch your life fall into pieces. Friendships are not by where you grew up. You say this... This is homeboy. There was a song growing up which was called Homeboy. 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 We never knew the lyrics. Homeboy. Homeboy. That a person is your homeboy does not mean they must be your close friend. It doesn't. I preached that someone the power of association some years back. Get it. Some of you are associating with people that are Helping you to build the wrong mindsets. Your thoughts always go in the direction of your associations. Proverbs 27 and verse 19. Proverbs 27 verse 19. I don't know if you have the TLB. It says, as water face answereth, answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. The TLB says, 
a mirror reflects a man's face. But what a man is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. A mirror reflects your face. But who you really are is proven by the friends you choose. Can I say something? Your spouse is your real you. No matter how cute you are, if you marry ugly, you are ugly. You can see my face is serious. I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm... <laughs> if you think you are smart and you marry foolish, you are not smart. You are foolish. How did you understand the proposal of foolish? To the point that you can say yes to foolish. If we said yes to foolish, you are foolish. You know, many of the things we fight to a spouse over, you are this, you are that, you are, you, 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 you accepted that. You call your husband stupid, you are missing stupid. Mm, I, I, you are the, uh, everything your spouse is, you are, you are living with it. I will say something. Have you ever seen people that you wonder how? Like, 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 how? Where and when? Like, no. I'll buzz around. I'll just some Mura Maria. How? Ganja. There's nothing ganja. What really deceives you is outer looks. You think just because a person has this stature must attract this other stature. No. It's minds that attract. It's not stature. And for your own information, there are no ugly people in this world. Somebody can be ugly to you, but they are you to another guy. That's why some of you should not be moved by friends. Your friend will tell you this guy is not the one. And yet you know that you know in your heart, or ah, every time your, his name comes across, your heart does this. <laughs> if it's Jeffrey, you are just watching a movie and one guy is called Jeffrey uh, whatever. He's the main actor. They are saying actors. Jeffrey. <gasps> Jeffrey. <laughs> your friend may not feel like you feel. Are you hearing? What's this also? The church you go to is the proof of who you really are. One time I saw a young lady. This young lady, very good looking, very intelligent, educated. Staying in a very smart big house, driving a smart car. And yet, on Sunday, she gets on the garments. Reps them. I said to myself, like what? And I'm thinking, this kind belong to Royal Assembly. She may be smart mentally, but she's, she is the decision of the church she has chosen. She can, she, she can be told, Drink, they, they wash their feet from the same bowel as everybody, and they are told, wash your face. The entire girl who's using a, a, a foundation that she buys for 3,000 rents, she has to travel to South Africa to get that. She can wash her face and mess up her skin care routine. But her belief is this. The church you go to is the proof of you. Can I say something right here? That's why when we tell you, you don't marry because you have feelings. I like him. I like her. I like, you like her. She's Satan's daughter. When tomorrow you are sharing scriptures, he or she may not understand. 
In fact, she will think you are a fool. He said, baby, let's go to church on Wednesday. Ah, There is a special meeting on Tuesday. Ah, but how do you up? We are having a conference with uh, so and so. Baby, we need to sow. But how do you do it? What is that? 10,000 dollars. Ten. Ten. How rough. We are going to go to the house. We are going to Says, These things are foolishness to somebody who's not born again. Please don't marry outside of your faith, no matter how they agree. They say, no, I don't have a problem with Jesus. I don't have a problem with his cross. In fact, I know his mother was a virgin when he I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I mean, it's, it's so cool that a virgin gave birth. It's so cool. I don't have a problem. No, I will still, they will still come to church with you. Take it from me. I've been doing this thing for some years. I've seen people marrying like that. A week after the wedding, the woman or the man disappears. But you are married. Yours is a suffering. It's not a wedding ring. At this point, it's too late. Listen, a snake is very smooth and nice to touch. Have you ever had a snake go over your body? Yeah. Bayern, yeah. have you ever had a snake go over your body? Yeah. It's very smooth and nice. But the very same snake has venom. Daddy, how can I run? Especially how we are about it. How can I your friends are talking to you. When that snake, snake comes and bites, you know what's the challenge? You can't go to the very same people who to, whom you told. You will now be dying in silence. Dying in silence. If you are single now and you have a chance to choose, don't choose outside your faith. If you are married and you came, you are hearing this, you are already married, believe God for the change of your spouse. He's not uh, married again. <laughs> if you have a chance to choose, a smooth snake is still a snake. It's still a snake. Associations. Finally, what builds mindset? The word of God. What is it? What is it? The word of God. This is the best form of building mindset. When you build your mind by the word, your spirit is at peace with communicating with your mind. And there is never a clash because there is an understanding. Remember, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are what? They are spirit. Right? So when you build your mind by the spirit, which is the word, it means now there is compatibility between your spirit and your mind. There is no conflict. There is no blockage. So it becomes easy for God to say, do this. And you say, with, with pleasure, sir, we are on it. And by reason of exercise, you now become swift to doing what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. The Word of God is the best place to build mindsets. When you come to the house of God, like you just listened to the sermon right now, your mind has been programmed. When you buy someone and you listen to them at home, in your car, you are building the mindset. Watch this, beloved. There is so much information that is coming into our minds on a daily basis. You are watching the news. Things that bring fear. You are getting reports. You are hearing people talking. Things that bring fear. Before the negative reports, your mind must be built by the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So much so, that the reports that you get from the outer world 
is like a two-year-old trying to push a 50-year-old. They come, but they don't have any effect. They don't have any effect. They don't have any effect. Prior to the challenges of life, you must build your mind with the word of God. Reading the word is not an option for a believer. It's not an option. Listening to sermons is not an option. Watch this. Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, he went to a Bible school, graduated from a Bible school. After graduation, one of the days he was in town trying to buy some books and bought two books that questioned the deity of God. After reading them, he came to the conclusions that led to what you call evolution. Fine. He said that at the end of his life, he repented and received Jesus. But what he did is still alive. What he did, some people are still following that. Be very careful of your exposures. There are some of you who can have a very strong spirit of fear because of the horror movies you watch. I don't understand why Christians watch horror movies. You are watching the tongue of a person coming out and raping one another person. You are watching the person putting their, their hand into the heart of a person and then removing it. And then they are eating it. They are eating it with black uh, 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 teeth and, 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 and they are eating it and they turn into a monster. Horror movies give access to demon spirits. It's not an advice. It's not my personal preference. I'm telling you what they do. You can have a strong spirit of lust because of the Netflix programs you watch. It's a series. Four seasons. There is no episode that there is no romantic engagement. And you, 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 you take in three, four episodes daily. And the more you, 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 you consume them, the more you realize your lust is increasing. When you see a man, you undress him with your eyes. No, with the eyes, not, uh, not physical. When you see a woman, she's a sex object. Because you saw that guy on TV. One time, this should be around about 2002, I had a friend who had the university. He liked watching this program of cheetahs. You know cheetahs? I knew it was time to stop one day. When <laughs> we were watching cheetahs and this guy was busted. And we, we were discussing how stupid the guy is. No, this guy shouldn't have done this. He should have done that. And I'm like, so we are discussing how we could take this to another level. I said, this is the end. When I was already in ministry, this should be about 2010 or, no, 2011. Someone introduced me to a thousand ways to die. I knew it was time to stop. When I saw the one where a man took out the garbage bin. And then somehow, the garbage, uh, the, the truck driver, didn't see where the man was. And when that thing do, did whatever, took the man in, the one, the owner of the house. They, they, they found him at the, when they were now removing everything. After I watched that the following day. <laughs> and I'm taking the garbage bin out. You know, it was so, it wasn't funny. You are laughing. <laughs> I took the garbage bin out. I went back into the house and, cl and, and closed the gate and watched them put it in. After the car left, I opened the gate. That's when I took it. And I asked myself, why was I this scared? I saw a program. A thousand and one ways.
to die. You see somebody killing themselves using tablets. The next time you see tablets in your mother's house, I wonder if that thing is true. Don't try this at home. I used to watch a lot of action movies and wrestling. You know, after watching action movies growing up, back then, you would not have probably movies at home. You go to school, they would be in the hall. They have a TV and VHS or VCR. Put the VHS tape. You just watch the blood spot by John Clude Van Damme. You are going home, it's dark. You are like, if any man tries me, I will give him that kick of Van Damme. Only to get home and try to do the kick, you can't do it. Some kids are so violent because you let them watch all these violent movies. Be very careful. I am very careful of what enters my mind. One of the reasons why I don't even sit at many meetings with many pastors is for one reason. Not every pastor thinks what I want to dwell in my mind. One time I was very angry at one pastor. He saw me. He said, ah, man. He said, ah, man. He said, ah, man. So wana bana go kereke ke stock wa re ke go invite o to wit open i said to him from today don't ever talk to me when when we are when we are in a mall you see me coming i see you see me coming i see you coming i'm not the one moving take a turn because i don't like this kind of a conversation i sat with some pastors they, they, were, they ordered their, their juice. But they kept on leaning down. I was wondering what they were doing. They were putting something in the juice. Before you knew it, they, they become very... I said, these ones are enemies of destiny. Whoever told pastors that, uh, that they are the God of God, that for them, some things are allowed. How can you be pastors? Three of you, you are, you, you are drinking together and it's okay. No, pastors gathering. How can you be members of a church like this? One, two, three, you go to a bar and you are drinking and you know you are members. You are in protocol, you are in asharing, you are in sanctuary and you are drinking together and you are members of a church. These people don't like you if you drink with them. Let's say you are the one who has a problem. These two, they don't like you. For them to stop you and they don't stop you, they are enemies of your progress. They are. Oh, can I say this? Not everybody in church is born again. And not everybody in church is going to motivate you correctly. Some people are here to make you a drunkard. That is their assignment to royal assembly. No, I don't have a problem with them being here. Let them listen to the word. Per adventure, they get born again. But... The issue is that you must be stronger than them. There are people who came here to destroy your marital destiny. They are not here for relationships. They will sleep with all the guys here. And every guy they sleep with can never get married. And you know what's the thing with sin in church? Nobody talks about it. Because it's sin. You will be surprised. Brother A, brother B, brother C, brother D, they are all in the same girl they don't know. But because in church, it's sin. I got told what to give So get try. Peter, I come on as If you don't know what that means, it's your problem. I'm telling you. Not everybody here is born again. There are people who are here. They will befriend you. After they befriend you, they introduce you to drugs. Yeah. A man joined the Christian Church of God. And he said his assignment, he even became a pastor. His assignment was to ensure Adeboye doesn't become the general overseer when the founder would pass on. The founder told everybody that I will show you who will be my successor. The man became a pastor so that he can influence the decision. 
But the founder was a spiritual man. And now he confessed to Adibwe that you won the battle. I he stayed there for years. There are people in this church right here. They are not here for God. They are here for you. You who is not strong, you are, you are giving them an ear. The person says, I want to visit you. They visit you. Oh, Tama is very cold. End of story. You look in your drawer, your underwear. One of them is not there. You were sleeping together with that person in the same bed. Especially you women. You like attachments. Whatever has made you hungry for attachment, you hug, hug everybody. I don't hug. Oh. Media, excuse me. They said I shouldn't come this side. <laughs> hug you. For where? For who? One time my spiritual father is the one who told me. He said, my son, there are women you should never give your chest to. Even if it's innocent. After that day, the moment to hug her, all of a sudden you start. <laughs> when you see her, your mind gets happy. That hair, it was that day. Because even with women, you are hugging. You are hugging. Oh God. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so, since I don't know who is who, everyone is a suspect. I ah, hug you for who for where? Never. God bless you. Bye. Bye. People that are sent to frame you will look genuine. To build trust. Please, build yourself in the spirit. Apart from the fact that you must build yourself that you can even judge and kill them. Time will not permit me to tell you of the people that try to date in this church. When the enemy can't get to me, can I tell you what he will do? He goes to my children. When I say children, I don't mean the four girls. I mean you. If Satan has brought a girl here to destroy me, and I don't give that girl attention, the next person is the two of you. The way you are sitting in the front. <laughs> Sir! Ah! We were in blockade. Though. You know blockade? A woman came. Hmm. Ah! I did not know. She was so genuine as it can ever be. When we heard the stories of church, the last church she was in, the church prior to that, and the church prior to that, she destroyed, 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 destroyed. Came to church. Hmm. Let me tell you something. For the first time, I understood how to love with my eyes open. Because I used to love with my eyes closed. Like that is me. I can support you with my everything. My daughter. My daughter. One time, 2010, I think, first lady had a dream. In that dream, she saw me going after a meeting or something. I was greeting some little kids and I was hugging them and some women. And she was coming from behind. But looking ahead, she was seeing some of the people had funny faces like demonic faces. Me, I wasn't seeing it. I just loved all these people. I was, and then she told me of the dream. She, she, won, she came and pulled me also. And I said, it was a divine dream. That was me. Me. I accept every person into my heart. I still do. With caution. This time, I have FBI checkups. <laughs> when that woman could not get to me, she went to Pastor Jerry. Yeah, true story now. She went to Pastor Jerry. I'm not the one who discovered Pastor Jerry. It was now Pastor Jerry talking to First Lady and said, you know, the other day I was talking to this woman. I was helping her this and this and this and that. The exact same strategy she wanted to use to get to me. Get my sympathy. Help me. Help me. You know, I am hurt. <laughs> Men of God, don't love people at the expense of God. The moment first lady told me, I knew what it was. I called Jerry. I said, from today, if you talk to that woman, I will kill you. <laughs> With my bare hands. 
when the devil can get to my finances, my marriage, my biological children, he wants to use you as a disgrace. So that it can look like, oh, no, BF, his marriage is fine. But you that I married, your marriage is not correct. Oh, BF, his children are living well, but yours, they are challenged in their health. That's why your followership should not be questionable. You are next after me in satanic attacks. <laughs> they are like, Naga toka like reke anu. Ah, Naga va. I didn't sign up for this. Naga va ya anu. I didn't sign up for this. So when Satan realizes he can't get me sick, he will say, Let the members be sick. For him to be frustrated, why are the members? For you to look like he's fake. Yeah. That's why together, me and you, we should not play with our Christianity. Don't play with your connectivity. Please, don't be a church member. Be a son and a daughter. A practitioner of everything taught in the house. Fully a practitioner. Don't double up on what we teach. Don't. Don't. What is shared on the stage, right now I just said this thing. You know, people are saying, daddy will give something as an example. It was not an example. Now, I'll just give you an example. A woman could not get to me, went to Pastor Jerry. Maybe right now, you are going through that. You are thinking, I'm helping. Ha, look, imagine me trying to go to hell to win Satan, and God did not even bother. If I can save somebody, when am I? Not that you look up to. Not that you, if I tell you somebody is unrelatable, they are unrelatable. God sentenced Satan. He, he goes to hell. In fact, he was not called Satan. He was called Lucifer. He said, that name I retrieve. The problem of some of you is this. You think you can do better than those who are above you. Hey, daddy, maybe I don't understand the situation. No problem. Continue. You will wake up when you are in the same pit with the individual that daddy never wanted to save. You, 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 you thought you are the savior. Go to hell. You won't return. You won't return. Now, here is a young girl that has destroyed other relationships. You say you, are, you like her. And we are telling you, be careful. Be careful. Okay, no problem. He said, that you don't understand. Me, I'm spiritually strong. I will even convert her. Go and convert Satan. Have you ever wondered why God never converted Satan? Jesus did not go to hell to convert Satan. He didn't. He went to hell to get the keys and leave. He went to, he didn't sit there and say, you know, Satan, tell me, how, how can I, some, how was it? What, what were you telling God that now he, it got him angry? Why are you trying to understand the squabble of Satan and Limudim? If Mudimu did not see it fit for him to remain, why do you think you can return him to God? Why? Somebody said we don't inherit enemies. Another person said, why are you saying Satan is your enemy? The battle is between Satan and God, not you. Since you are a child of God, Satan now inherited you. You are an enemy. God has not saved Satan. Don't try. There is no believer who will go to hell. The day you go to hell, just know you are not returning. You go to hell to go and win uh, Satan. Tell me, Satan. And then Satan will say, I want to sit on the chair of God. I will sit on the chair of God. Nobody has ever sat on the chair of God. I just wanted to, I, I will exalt myself above the most high. What does it, how is it like to be the acting president? How is it like to be the acting God? I just wanted to, I just, and then Mujimu Hela Kabo and Hela, Wajur Mujimu Kabo and Hela Bari, Mujimu Bari, Karikwa Ta Omo Tankola. Mujimu Bari Kwa Ta Omo Tankola. I just want to, I just want to know what, how it feels like when all the people on the earth are worshipping you. I just wanted to taste and see that the Lord is good. And then Mujimu Hela Bari, I'm planning a coup. I'm planning a coup. 
So out of that hell, out of that, now one day, hell, the other angels are coming hell, with the swords and they are just fighting. And the other guys now, who, who knew what I wanted to do? They now started defending with me. They started defending with me. And then we have lost the battle. Now we are sent out of heaven. Now, now just imagine. I didn't say it would be permanent. I just wanted to taste And he's the father of lies. He'll tell you he wanted to taste. He's lying. If he had sat there, he would have sat forever. There is nobody who has a problem with, let's say, your husband. For some of you who are married, if a person has a problem with your spouse, have a problem with that person. You cannot befriend haters of your spouse. In the name of You see that woman at a function, you give her your, your chest. Hey, how are you? Oh, how have you been? In the midst of COVID, and your wife is watching there, you are about to divorce. Don't worry. You are about to. The enemy of your spouse is your spouse. You don't have to understand why your spouse, if your wife says, I don't like that woman, she doesn't like her, don't like her. Even if it has not happened to you, you like your marriage. If you like your marriage, if you like your marriage, the enemy of your wife is your, is your, is your enemy. Finished. Some of you naive men. Because that woman may even use this your naiveness and now get to you because she wants to get to her. Sleep with you just to pain her. You were not hot. She just wanted to get to her. It's not that you are hot. Ah. It was just you, you were, you were a, a means to an end. And you wake up in her bed. Say, I never knew, but your wife warned you. After your wife warned you and you didn't heed, you know you can't go to your wife and say, baby, I'm sorry. Because you're like, she will say, I told you so. Heed to warnings. When we tell you don't start relationships you don't know, it's not because we want your boyfriends or your girlfriends. We have our wives. <laughs> I don't think they will understand. Will they understand that I have this guy? Will they? Let's just do it and then I see if it, if it continues. If I see that it's now solid, that's when I will tell them. Let me tell you one of the laws we are putting in place. If we discover you started a relationship without us, continue with it without us. If you came with a relationship to Ryan Assembly and your coming here was with the relationship, we adopt you. You who knew, you start without us. You better be afraid. These days I even pick things far. Start without us. Continue without us. Just as you saw it fit to start without us. So it, see it fit. See, see it fit to continue without us. We are not that important. Continue. Now, how can you go on a date with a sinner? What are you trying to find out? No, the person is a sinner. Is there I want to know him? What are you knowing? After you know him, then what? The person is a sinner, primarily. And you, especially you girls, you are dangerous. You like food more than you like God. Let's go out for a date. You, are, you, you don't know whether a person goes to church, is born again. Let me tell you something. Look spooky. When you see a guy, the relationship and the friendship is going somewhere, ask him, which church do you go to? Are you born again? Anybody will say, I'm born again. Ask them what it means to be born again. If their explanation is not satisfying, no date. Stop going out on dates with anything. And then you break your heart after you discover this guy is not born again. Worse, he has slept with you. I'm going to discover tomorrow that he is married. You know you can't come to my office and say, Daddy, I'm heartbroken. Already you have caught feelings. Now you are to go through withdrawal with no support. Hey, and break my heart. Already you are going through, you cry at night, you can't call pastor for counseling. You Yeah. When we talk like this, they think you are being too much, you are too mean too much. Look, look, life is too much. Life is too much. 
Even those who started with us and we took them through the process, even when they enter marriage, things are difficult sometimes and they, we still need to stand with them. How much more you who started with wrong foundation? Those who started with right foundation, they still have to battle some things. You with wrong foundation, well, how much more? Your own good. <laughs> 